When we first appeared on national TV, we claimed that the ionisation type of smoke alarm, supposedly protecting hundreds of millions of families around the world, are dangerous. David Isaac from the Fire Protection Association of Australia appeared on the program. David, I understand you've done extensive research regarding this issue. Why is it that ionisation smoke alarms pass global fire safety standards? Adrian, I think it would help if I could explain how we measure the performance of smoke detectors and smoke alarms in Australia in order to pass the tests for approval. We use a measure called percent light obscuration per metre. At 10% obscuration per metre, the average person would be running for the door. You wouldn't be very comfortable in a room at 10% obscuration smoke. 20% obscuration is the maximum allowed to pass a test for approval in Australia. Now what we discovered is the Australian Standards Committee doing some inquiries into test data to our horror was that ionisation smoke alarms are allowed to go to 50 to 60 percent obscuration per metre. I'll say that again, 50 to 60 percent obscuration per metre. Dangerously high, totally unacceptable. You can imagine, if you run for the door at 10 percent, you probably won't find the door at 50 to 60 percent. How could this be possible? In 1976, the US government funded testing of smoke alarms in typical residential applications. And in 1976, they discovered that the ionisation smoke alarm had an inability to detect smoke from typical smouldering fires. Fires such as a cigarette dropped on a couch or a mattress or on the smouldering electrical fault that would occur in a home. The type of smouldering fires that occur at night when residents are asleep. The type of fires that statistically initiate the most fatal fires in residential structures. And for 30 years, this information has been kept from the public, largely by authorities who insist that the evidence is inconclusive.